and Larry Elder, radio host and author, and Mark Lamont Hill, CNN political commentator there uh, in, in Missouri. What do you think? Should Obama go to Ferguson instead of, uh, no, we know Holder's there. Should Obama go to Ferguson? I would have loved to have seen the president go there, but I only want the president to go there if he's going to say things that are moving the conversation forward. Other otherwise, it just becomes a distraction. You know, the president has made several statements on this, and I criticized him on a CNN.com piece. Uh, for not naming race, for not speaking about the ways in which this affects race, and for, and for preaching calm, not just telling us to not riot or to not loot. I get that. That's, that's reasonable, and I think we all agree that people shouldn't be looting and destroying property. But the idea uh, of telling people to remain calm almost delegitimizes de the, very le the very real and legitimate anger that people feel for what happened. So I want the president to come there, and I want him to speak uh, truths and to demand justice. And that doesn't mean take sides. It means speak about the due process, speak about the way in which law enforcement has a role in this as well in terms of blame. That's what I want to hear from a sitting president. Any president. We should point, out, we should point out that the, that the White House uh, has said the president has not gone to Ferguson yet just because that would take away from local law enforcement, take, take all of that away because they would need to protect him instead of investigate and do what they're doing on the ground. Uh, Larry Elder, what do you think? Should he be there? Well, the reason this is a difficult issue for President Obama, Brooke, is because the president has spoken out of both sides of his mouth. If the country were as racist as he thinks that it is or says that it is, he could never be elected president. I once interviewed the head of the NAACP, Kwesi Nfume, and I said, Mr. Nfume, as between the presence of white racism or the absence of black fathers, which poses the bigger threat to the black community? He said, without missing a beat, the absence of black fathers. Huh. I'm not saying that the problem of an unarmed black person being shot by a cop is not something we ought to be concerned about, but for crying out loud, nearly half of the homicides in this country are committed by black people, almost always against another black person. Chicago, 10 homicides a week last year, most of them by black people, most of them, by the way, unsolved. So let's have some perspective here. I can't get a good idea on how many what numbers of blacks, unarmed blacks are killed by the police, but it appears to be the number might be maybe 2% of the total of blacks killed any given year. Hmm. I, I don't, I'm, I'm confused about what perspective that gives us, Larry. I, I don't disagree with you that we should be concerned about black on black violence. I think all of us are, many of us, including well, myself, me, we are. We or, let me just finish the thought. We organize about it. We teach about it. I'm in Chicago very regularly doing that anti-violence work. I think that matters. But that doesn't mean that we should be talking about that instead of talking about an unarmed black child with his hands in the air who was killed, who was essentially executed. And it's, it, it, I find it mind-boggling that whenever a black child, a black teenager, a black person, man or woman, is killed by law enforcement, suddenly people feign uh, outrage about black-on-black -black crime. A whole bunch of people only talk about black on black crime when it's not a black person killing a black person. It's when this happens. And the reason why the black community is so outraged right now is because a black kid child was killed like many other times, and it's being done with impunity. Law enforcement is getting off the hook. And that's what people are concerned will happen here if we don't protest. Black people go to jail for killing other black people. Black people go to jail for killing white people. But oftentimes when law enforcement is, is attacking black folk and killing them, there is no response. They do it with impunity, and that's what people are outraged about. And we have a right to talk about that. Let me just jump in because I hear, I hear Larry's point. I know, Mark, you agreed with him talking about um, black fathers and the absence of black fathers and, and all these different issues culturally that, that, are, that, are, that are important to discuss. But, but when it comes to the president, let me just bring it back to your op-ed, Mark, and I, Larry, I want you to weigh in. You know, if the president should talk more overtly about race, um, what should he say? The president gave a speech in 2007 when he was Senator Brooke, and he said that the Moses generation, the generation of Martin Luther King, had gotten us 90% of the way there. Our generation, he referred to his own generation as the Joshua generation, has to get us the rest of the 10%. Eric Holder has frequently talked about the pernicious racism in America, gave a speech a few weeks ago where he outlined what he called pernicious racism. It included things like photo voter ID, which most blacks support. Uh, different expulsion rates, which happens no matter what the school district is around the country. And he also mentioned different sentencing uh, arrest uh, rates when the co sentencing commission, <clears throat> excuse me, he mentioned different sentencing uh, rates when the commission has said that those different rates, and there, it is true that blacks are sentenced somewhat longer than whites for the same crime, but the reason are legitimate factors, including arrest records. So when you look at the racism that Obama talks about, I'm trying to figure out what it actually is he's talking about that is as important as the problem of the absence of fathers in but the black that, community. You point out, was Seven, Larry, this, this, is like, this, is, this is like this is like a verbal tick with conservatives. Whenever a black person is treated unjustly, they say, hey, but you don't have a father. Hey, but you kill each other. As if that makes black people disposable, as though somehow black that's people not what are I worthy said. of death. That's not what I, I said didn't at say, all. I, I didn't say what you said. What I'm that's saying is that's the... 
Larry, I'm not saying you just said that. What you just did was bring up black fathers in a conversation about an unarmed black child being killed. Michael Brown has a father. Two days ago, I stood with Michael Brown's father and hugged him as he cried that his unarmed child was killed by a police officer. I'm asking... Having a father, having a father doesn't make you more or less likely to get killed by law enforcement. They don't ask for DNA reports before they shoot you. That's the problem here. And as far as racism persisting, it does, Larry. It just does. And every I'm empirical study shows that. I'm asking you for perspective. I'm asking you for perspective. The number one preventable cause of death for young black men is homicide. The number one preventable cause for death of young white men are car accidents. I'm asking you for perspective. How often does it happen that an unarmed black is shot by a cop? And furthermore, every Ferguson, 28 hours, under the rug. every 28 hours, being swept Larry, under the rug. Larry, every 28 hours, according to the MXGM study, a black person, a black person is killed by law enforcement seven, vigilantes or securities. dead in no, Chicago no, alone you, on the weekend. Seven but dead we're not in having, Chicago okay, alone. Okay, 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 okay. We're not hold having on, an hold oppression. Hold on, hold on, hold on, gentlemen. Let me just let me pipe in because there was another shooting yesterday involving a 23-year-old African-American man and there is something that no one is talking about when it comes to that shooting death. I want to talk about that and ask why next. Let's get back to it. Larry Elder, Mark Lamont Hill. Here's what's bothering me. This is what no one is really talking about and this is what I want to ask you both about. There was a shooting just a couple miles from that burned down quick trip in Ferguson. A 23-year-old African-American man was shot and killed by police officers. Police say it was suicide by cop. And according to police, this, this young man was saying, please kill me, please shoot me. I'm not questioning the suicide by cop part. What I'm, what I'm wondering why no one is talking about this is the mental health of that young man. And I was talking with a friend last night who was saying why is no one discussing mental health of young men of color in this country and I'm wondering Mark Lamont Hill why I think there are a few reasons I think one just as a nation we don't talk about mental health we mock people for going to see therapists we call people crazy uh, when you look at even pop culture with the haunted house with the with the psychos inside there's this whole culture that stigmatizes mental health illness I think also with young black men because they're seen as being prone to violence, being prone to irrationality because they're seen as unintelligent and often immoral when they display behaviors that are clearly crying for help, we dismiss it as just a no, as a part of their normal everyday pathology. Uh, and then I think oftentimes within the African American community we also stigmatize uh, mental health issues. We tell people to take it to the church, take it to Jesus. We don't go to see therapists even at, at the same rate as our uh, as our white counterparts. And then on top of that, when you're in a context of racism and white supremacy, you engage more trauma. When you live in a war zone like Chicago, or in this case, Ferguson, you're surrounded by death and violence and harassment. And so you're, 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 you, have, you have more triggers, and, and we need to deal with that in a very substantive way. Larry Elder, I would love to hear your voice. Well, I think the media perceives Brooke racism to be a far bigger problem in America. That's, a, that's why we spend so much time on people like Donald Sterling and, and Clive and Bundy. And before that, it was Paul Ryan who said some things I that think were the perceived was to be health. racially intemperate, intemperate. I think we've been training black people to uh, think that racism is a bigger deal. And I think the reason that the left wants that is because of, of votes and power. As long as black people believe that race and racism are the major problem in America, you got that 95% monolithic black vote without which the Democratic Party cannot survive. So you have the Jessies and the Owls and Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Harry Reid constantly bringing up race cars, talking about the Republicans raging a war against black people and so forth. So black people have been trained, surprise, surprise, people in Ferguson believe that the racist criminal justice system is oppressing them because Obama and Eric Holder have said, have said statements that have given them that impression. Country? Are you saying no, it is not a major country? problem in this country. No, it is not. My father was a janitor. He was born in the Jim Crow South. Fast forward, my father in his late 40s started a small business, uh, got a little bit of property. Uh, this is what happens in America. Raised three boys, educated them. Uh, we have a thriving black middle class. If black America were a country, Brooke, it would be the 15th wealthiest country in the world. For crying out loud, this is not your grandfather's America. We ought not act like it is. Yeah. Yeah, but Larry, I don't think, two things. One, I think your earpiece could be broken because the question was on mental health, and you once again go back to the pathologies of the black community. That's stunning to me. But Why do you have to insult me all the time? Why can't I'm, you address what I said rather than insulting me? Why is that go necessary? Ahead, Mark. Can let, we let have Mark a discussion of two Mark black finish. men without Larry. insulting each other? Is Larry. that possible? Can we, pl Larry, can we try I'm, and do that, please? Larry, Larry I haven't insulted please you. What I'm, Larry, I'm not insulting you. What I'm responding to is you have. Because the, Oh, you said I was a finish. Sounding a dog whistle? Why do Republicans always use a dog on, whistle? I didn't say, Why don't you with what I said? The merits of what I said. Nice. For a change, Second. Lamont. I watch you all the time. You talk over people. You don't listen to the merits of what they you're say. You're talking over me. Like, first of all, okay, a few things. I never said dog whistle. Second, you're saying engage what you talk sure about. You did. I just talked. Let me finish. I, I didn't. When you rewind this, you'll realize you were wrong. When I, when I, when I, when I, when I just spoke about was mental health in the black community. You, 
what I just what I just spoke about was mental health in the black community, and you responded by talking about black people and believing that racism still exists. You totally didn't acknowledge my question or respond to my comment. So let's because I want us to that. have perspective and but, talk about what's important, but you okay. won't do that. Oh no! Well, you don't get to decide what's important. You don't, we, we all have opinions here. I made, a, I made a comment. I wanted you to respond to it. But I'll, I'll respond to your yeah, you, comment. You think, you think the problem of unarmed black people is a major problem in America? And I don't. Okay, I don't. so let's. Okay, well, let me tell you what I think now that you've spoken. There are two issues here. You mentioned black on black crime. You say that that's a problem. I agree with you that it's a it's problem. It's a huge problem. A I, massive Larry, problem. I, Larry, Larry, I agree with you. One let's voice, argue gentlemen. About one I, voice. Mark I Miller. agree with Larry Elder that black and black violence is an issue. I absolutely agree with him. So let's not argue about what we both agree on. I agree. But if, if this study bears out, and it does, that at least one, that every 28 hours a bl an unarmed black person is killed, then that also is a problem. Is it as big a problem that means as it's other less issues? less than 2% of the total, Lamont. Less than 2% of the total. Oh, 7,000 black people killed every year. Less than 2% are killed uh, by police officers in an unarmed way. So why don't we talk about the 98%? And many of these murders we in are, Chicago are unsolved. At least we know what happened in the Michael Brown case.